What we want to really get into is who you are and how you became the man you are today. So, um, talk about early life for you. Born um, and your parents, what kind of role they played for you early on. Um, this might sound funny, but uh, I was born in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. So, uh, down south, you know, southern boy. And, um, you know, my parents were, um, were immigrants from Ghana, West Africa. I got introduced to football, you know, at a very early age. Um, you know, I, I basically started football when I was about six years old. And, um, you know, my father being from Ghana, West Africa, really wanted me to play soccer. I remember just going to the game when I was about six years old, like, wow, one day I have to be doing this. Definitely wasn't the biggest kid. I was a, a late bloomer. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't killing them with, with height or killing them with, you know, size. But the one thing I did have advantage over everybody else was my speed. Oklahoma was the only thing that I knew. You know, down south was the only thing that I knew. And then moving to Massachusetts was a brand new experience at the time. My parents were like, you know what, we want to enroll you into, you know, a private school. And I'm like, man, a private school? I'm like, <laughs> none of my buddies are going to be able to go there. So I was, I was going through some difficult times. You know, my, first, my freshman year was a very difficult time period for me. You come in, you're a running back now. Mm -hmm. You're establishing yourself as a running back, which right. we'll get to later because most Bear fans wouldn't recognize that. That was a real hard lesson for me because realistically, I set the bench for about three years of my high school. Three or four years there? Three years. Three years I set the bench. Um, didn't see the football field. I told my father, you know what, maybe I don't want to, I'm going to do something different around that time, you know, because I just haven't had that opportunity. And my father stepped in and said, look, you've committed yourself for this long. You know, um, you know how the system works. You know that you have to just wait your turn. Um, this is some adversity that you're going to have to go through. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to test your character. It's going to test your manhood. And it's going to make you the person that you are. And I said, uh, I will never sit on the, on the bench again, you know, because that was a hard lesson learned. Talk to me about the numbers that you put up your senior year <laughs> and touchdown yards. And how soon was it during that senior year that some colleges actually took notice of you? Because by then, you know, colleges are looking now at sophomores and juniors. Right. I rushed for 1,800 yards. Yeah. 33, <laughs> 33 touchdowns. Just 33 touchdowns. Yeah. 97 carries. And I started to get a lot of buzz and a lot of attention from the NFL, from, from the media, uh, nationally, mm -hmm. you know, from different agents. It was interesting because once I went to, like, the Combine, um, I, I kind of sized myself up to everybody else, like Ricky Williams, you know, and Edron James at the time. These guys were all at the Combine with These you. These guys were all at the Combine with me. And, you know, we've, we had similar numbers, we just, you know, just... A, a different way of getting there. I went to the combine as a running back, and I started getting a lot of attention from organizations about being a possible defensive back, cornerback, and safety or whatever. So I really didn't understand it because I've never done this, and you know, it's a lot different running forward than backwards. Running, running forward and running backwards are two totally different things. <laughs> Draft day comes along. Mm -hmm. First round goes by. Second round, round goes yeah. by. I started getting calls like in the second round from different organizations saying, you know what, we're trying to draft you, but everybody basically in the war room has to be on the same page sure. before you get drafted. So, you know, I got calls in the second round, calls in the third round, calls in the fourth round. And uh, finally the Bears called me and they said, you know what, we want to draft you. We really like your athletic ability. Um, you know, we're going to go with you. And I said, I was on the phone. I was like, you know what, this is great, this is wonderful. Finally, somebody wants me to run with the football for their, organi for their organization. And they were like, well, uh, we want you to kind of come in as a defensive back. And I'm like, a defensive back? I'm like, you saw the resume. I know you saw the resume. <laughs> you want to you bring me in as a defensive back? And they were like, yeah, we want to bring you in as, as a defensive back. We like your athletic ability. We, we like what you bring to the table. So we think that you can make a smooth transition as a defensive back. And I said, well... You know what, I have confidence in myself that sure. I can make, make the transition. So yeah, how quickly was it that you joined the Bears, that you really caught on and felt confident as a defensive back and was able to start for them and take over? Well, my first year was really tough, and I remember going into training camp and having a, another talk with my father. And I was really like, went Dad, back to I was dad. like, went back to my dad. I remember being in a dorm in Platteville, Wisconsin. Mm where there's nothing around, and it was a here fun I time, am. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here I am as a defensive back, don't know what I'm doing. You know, I felt like I was in preschool while everybody was in graduate school or, or graduated. And um, 
I really didn't understand how to be a defensive back, but I had to learn because there's no redshirt season. Right. And plus, they're paying me a lot of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, I remember Vance Bedford, um, he was my coach, and he used to just ride me so hard, so hard. But it was all in love. Like, I understand it now. And he came to me after my first season and says, you know, we had to do what we had to do to get you prepared to get, that, to get out on that football field. And I totally understood it, but at the, after I, I understood it. But right. when it was going on, I, I really didn't understand it. And going into training camp was really tough because I really didn't feel like I had a fair shot at making a team because I was just so, I, I just wasn't, you know, at the expertise as the other guys. Mm -hmm. So went to, the, went to the phone, went to my father again and said, Dad, you know what? I don't know if this is for me. And he said, you know what? You made this commitment again. You know, it's kind of like high school. You know, you put everything you had into it. They made a commitment in you, you know, and it's all about this opportunity. You know, you have the opportunity right in front of you. Take full advantage of it, you know, and get it done. What's it like for an NFL player or any athlete, I guess, mm -hmm. to realize that the mind is there, but the body, you're told the body or you realize the body can't. A neck injury to you said, the doctors just said, listen, you, you can yeah, take a the chance. Yeah, yeah, you can take a chance or, you know, you can... You can, you can take a chance and hopefully have a successful career. Right. Or, you know, you're, you're rolling the dice at getting hurt even more, and this time it might be permanent. You know, I, I got hurt, and I was like, you know what? There's more to life than, than just football. You know, that's, that's one chapter of my life, you know, and that's one thing that, that defines me and it basically connects me to a lot of people. But my life and me is just a little bit more than that. How tough was that one, that, that that, that day? I mean, it was tough, you know, but um, I prepared myself for it for that day. And it was actually like a happy day because, I mean, it's been a blessing to play for the Chicago Bears, to play for a team that, that I grew up watching. You know, Walter Payton was a guy that I just always wanted to be. This experience has been tremendous and it's been great. And I've had a lot of fun and I've always held my head up high. And I just, that, that, that basically gave me the strength to, to just say, you know what, it's time to leave. Um, you know, I've had a great time, a wonderful time, and it's time to move on to the next chapter of my life, and I was really excited about that. Preview. Sure, when you look at Jerry, you see all the glitz, the glamour, obviously the good suits and the <laughs> athletic ability. But what you don't see is his proudest achievement to date, ASAP, the Azuma Student Assistant Program is helping underprivileged children realize their lifelong dream of attending college. Here now is more on ASAP. ASAP, the Zuma Student Assistance Program, to basically assist underprivileged kids throughout a high school institution. It's always been my nature just basically to give back, and um, I've been figuring, trying to figure out ways to, to give back to the high school level. I was basically placed in a similar program. It was called the adopt -a student Program, and uh, basically a benefactor came in and said, you know what, I'll agree to pay for all your school fees, just do well in school and, and, and try your best. I took that and I basically uh, gave it a little spin, and that's how we came up with ASAP. Since 2004, we've helped probably about eight kids you know, um, giving them scholarships so that they don't have to worry about any financial burdens, you know, and their families are really appreciative and, and they're very appreciative too. I see a lot of kids out there and uh, a lot of people are really struggling and, you know, there's some tough times out there and I just wanted to basically just help someone, you know, uh, someone that's a little less fortunate, someone that needed some help. <laughs> Every single family that I basically helped uh, has, has said something, you know, to the, to the effect that, you know, they're really grateful for, for this opportunity that, that's come their way. And, uh, you know, it is very touching because, you know, you, you, you see it, you know, actually happen in front of you that um, people are really benefiting from this. But we try to keep um, a track of all the guys and girls um, that have attended the program and, and just kind of just see, you know, how their life pans out. So it'd be nice to see a, a little re reunion uh, 10 years down the line. Future goals is just basically to um, expand the number of kids and expand the number of schools. Everybody needs some help and uh, I want to make it a point where I want people to take ownership and saying that, you know what, I've been helped, let me help the next person as well and just keep that cycle going. All right, so ASAP, Azuma, Azuma Student, Student Assistance, Assistance Program. Program. Yes. Was this 
the moment you retire, was this the first thing you thought about? How quickly did it in a picture? What did you do upon retirement to get you to this part of your life? Well, ASAP was basically established in 2004. And I'll never forget this because I was at the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. And I was sitting on the balcony and I was like, you know what? It's time to give back at the high school level. I really want to give back and, and really get my foundation up and going. And uh, I really want to go out there and help somebody. It, it was a program that, like I said before in the, in the video, was spun because I was, a, I was basically in the program that was similar to it. It was called the Adopt a Student Program. And basically what it was was a benefactor decided to just take all those financial burdens away from me so I can just go to school and just worry about my grades and, and worry about getting a great education. So that's basically where um, ASAP basically came from. Can you talk about uh, in, the, in the video and, and with the program about helping these kids and, and keeping in touch with them, um, what has been the number one thing that has been said to you either uh, from a, a, a child or from their family or maybe one of your peers about what you've been able to accomplish by sending these kids to school? Well, a lot of people do like the, the, um, the idea behind, you know, basically just giving back in general. And it's always been my nature to just give back. Um, I've given back to my university. I built the uh, performance, performance center mm -hmm. there. And, uh, you know, I decided to build that because I knew that it helped you know, over 700 student athletes. It's always been in my nature to give back because I've, I believe in opportunities mm -hmm. and, and you should just kind of pay it forward. And um, if, if you can help a person, you might as well just go ahead and do that because, you know, it, they, can, they can also help another person and so on and so forth, especially those that are less fortunate. How uh, hands-on? Are there parts of this program? Uh, does everything go through you? Are you? Is it uniquely Jerry Azuma? Is your thumbprint on what happens? Well, we started it up in my hometown of Worcester, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and then naturally brought it over to my second hometown, which is Chicago, Illinois. And um, I teamed up with uh, a woman named Micaiah Johnson, who's helped me out tremendously with this organization, um, with, with the outreach of getting the schools involved, getting the right people involved to make it all work. What I want to really get home with ASAP is the fact that like, there's people out there that are really trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. There's really people out there that are, are trying to um, touch some lives and really just give other people that are unfortunate you know, opportunities. For you, uh, in, with these kids here in Chicago, what, would, uh, what is the, the ultimate thing that you want to see for them? Uh, is it that they are, um, through what you've been able to help, now they, they are successful enough that they can also feed back into the program and so it grows? Yeah, I definitely want um, the people that I've helped to be successful. I mean, sure. that's, that's the ultimate goal. But um, I also want to see it grow and blossom and, and I, wanted, I want ASAP to basically affect you know, different people's lives. Um, just increasing the number, increasing awareness that like organizations like this do exist and organizations do really care about education and promoting um, education for, for kids and uh, just helping underprivileged people. So it's all about just spreading that awareness and getting that awareness out to people. with Jerry Zuma and uh, sort of like my five questions, although I can't add, so it might be more or less. Oh, boy. All right, so what is your favorite comfort food? What's the bad food that you like to eat? Anything that begins with the letter C. So chips, cookies, cupcakes, cake. <laughs> it all works for you. It all works for me. What's all on, of it. What's on your iPod? What's on my iPod? I'm, I'm a fan of music, so I have everything from Jay-Z to Johnny Cash. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, that's the Oklahoma in you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> most, <laughs> most embarrassing moment on or off the field? Most embarrassing moment on or off the football field? Oh, man. It, it, this isn't PG. <laughs> <laughs> most embarrassing moment. Um, gosh, just I think one of my most embarrassing moments was coming out of the tunnel when they announced my name and I tripped. Fall flat? I, I stumbled and I kind of went down and I, I couldn't play it off. I mean, there was 60,000 people there. so <laughs> That's a good they, they knew I messed up, that but works. I made it look good, though. Uh, everything I tried. About, everything about Jerry Silva has to look good. <laughs> All right, what's some of the best trash talking you ever heard on the field? Oh, and who did it come from? Yeah. Chris Carter is a great trash talker. Um, T.O., he can talk his fair of, uh, of junk. 
Um, I would say those two right there would be, you know, top of the list of trash talking. But there's there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that that talk a lot of trash that try to get in your head. Did you talk? No, I wasn't a talker. Really? I'm lying. I was a talker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been anything in your post football life that you have found as gratifying as your best moment on the football field? Wow. That is a great question. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we might have to come back to that. We'll come, we can come back to that. You think about wow. it. What other famous person have you been uh, uh, confused for? What is some? Uh, this guy? Oh, come on, man. Um, for some odd reason, a lot of people think that Ladamian Thomason looks like me. <laughs> there is a little Ladamian. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do a split screen. <laughs> Ladamian Thomason. Yeah, I, I get um, confused for him. It's uh, it's weird. Even in Chicago, it's it's crazy. You still thinking? I'm still thinking You're about that still thinking? We're, what, what we're looking for is the answer now. Anything in your life post-football, has it been as gratifying as the most gratifying moment on the football field? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Just one thing, huh? Just one thing. Give me one thing. Post-football. Post-football. Because you, you, you set national awards, you, you were a pro bowler. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you played in the biggest games you could play in in the NFL. Yeah. So those were all extremely important times extremely for you. huge, yeah. You know what, there's nothing like giving back, though. There really isn't. Um, I figure that so much help has been given to me to get, to get me to this point that I'm at right now, whether it was being on the football field or being off the football field and, you know, trying to be successful mm -hmm. that, you know what, you just bottle all that up and it's just really, really gratifying. So the fact that, like, I can try to touch somebody mm -hmm. and try to help them achieve the things that I've achieved, you know, especially if they were, like, less fortunate and they couldn't get it on their own and just giving them that little extra, you know, and seeing them take off, I think that's, that's probably one of the most gratifying things. It works for me. Jerry Zuma, thank you very much. Thank you. ASAP, I hope it keeps continuing with success. Yes. Thank you all for being here. Jerry Zuma, former bear and uh, generally good-looking and well-dressed man. <laughs>